Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video, I will teach you how to average sub 5 seconds on the 2x2 with the beginner's method. So some of you might be like, okay Daniel, how is that even possible? How do you even solve the 2x2 with the beginner's method, right? The slowest method in under 5 seconds. Well, personally, I've been able to do it. I've been able to do it at many competitions and my friends who use more advanced methods um, or even two look to solve or one look to solve can't even achieve sub five. I'll do a quick AO5 right here for demonstration and show you that this is actually possible. So the beginner's method on a 2x2 is fairly simple. You have three steps. First, you solve the white layer, and then you solve the yellow face. And then lastly, you permutate all of the corners on the yellow face. So if our target for solving the entire cube is under five seconds, then we should be targeting to solve the first face, the white face, in under 1.5 seconds, and then solving the yellow face, OLL, in under two seconds, and then lastly, PLL in 1.5. And the reason that I'm giving two seconds to the OLL step is because, first of all, there are more OLL cases. In the 2x2, two two, there are only two PLL cases. Um, well, technically three. One of them is solved. Um, however, for OLL, there are seven. And these are all the edges-oriented OCL algorithms um, in 3x3 three three terminology. You can also view the 2x2 two two as a 3x3 three three without the edges, right? And then although the PLL algorithms are technically longer, they are easier and faster to recognize. So it should be really a blast through the PLL stage. So first of all, when you're completing your first layer, try to be color neutral. Learn the opposite colors, for example, white and yellow, uh, red and orange, and green and blue. And keep in mind which color you started throughout the whole solve. If you're starting the solve and you see this bar here, right? You see this bar, this green and yellow bar. So the first thing I think about is, first of all, don't break this bar and try to form either the green face based off of this bar or the yellow face based off of this bar. And I see some pretty easy solutions here. First of all, we could bring this corner down to form three yellow pieces, or we can bring um, this green piece down to form three green pieces. So make sure to take advantage of these bars and I would say like 80% of solves will contain one of these pre-made bars, so make sure to take advantage of it. Next, once you've found one of these bars, it's pretty easy to insert a third piece in, but make sure to also take note of where the fourth piece is, for example, here. Um, so I think the optimal solution here is to choose um, the yellow bar because I just feel like it's easier for me. Um, so keeping in mind that y the opposite color of yellow is white, which means for OLL, I will be looking for white pieces and not yellow pieces. Sometimes I get confused for that too, and that's why you might see me like pause for like a second to think. Um, but we'll move this down. But we realize that, well, if we move this down, right, how I would solve this um, sort of, I guess, F2L case or this corner case is using this algorithm, right? However, we realize that on the two by two, less moves is just such a big win, right? So when we're solving the first layer intuitively, make sure that we can do it as few moves as possible. For example, here, I, you sort of just have to like learn these cases, but you can move this corner with a U prime. So then when you bring it down, you can insert this corner really easily. So let's try another example. Here I have a white and blue bar. So taking a look at the blue corners, we see this one. So we can quickly pair that up with 
a R, R move, right? And we see this one, which is super easy to insert. So that's going to be essentially a three move insert, right? Because I can just do that. However, let's take a look at um, white. Although we also have this bar for white and this one move insert, this last corner is going to be really, really tiresome. This is going to require like 12 or so moves moving over here and doing putting that in. So make sure that you're not only looking for white, because even though if there's a white bar, the other color on that bar may actually prove to be much easier than you think. So here we can just simply insert like so. And keeping in mind that we are now looking for green pieces for our OL and not yellow or other any other color. Lastly, I want to talk over this case. So in this case, I've chosen white as my starting color. So I want this piece to be inserted here. There are two ways to insert it. One way is this way, right? And the other way is this way. So which way is better? I'll give you a second to think. And yeah, obviously it's this way. Why? Well, we see that in trying to reduce our total move count, right? If we insert this piece this way with three moves, this piece can be easily inserted with one, two, three, four, four moves, right? However, if we insert this piece directly like so, three moves, then we, we're stuck with this corner piece on top, which we can either do the sexy move for three times, so in total of uh, 12 steps, or we have to do this long algorithm. And I don't like long algorithms, right? Um, so when you're trying to insert your second to last piece, for example, this piece, try to insert it in a manner that will somehow affect the piece with your starting color on top. So this case is a little harder to think. If you want to insert it this way, you won't affect this piece. If you want to insert it this way, you can't affect this piece. So what you have to do in this case, you have to be a little creative. Here we could do this. Sort of like a sledgehammer. So then you see that this piece will be affected. So this is a lot of intuition and you'll get better with practice, but please, please practice with this in mind. Um, make sure that you're reducing steps everywhere you can in solving our first phase. So I just want to go over one last way to solve this case, and this might be really, really helpful. When you have a corner with your starting color on top um, relative to the face that you're trying to build, there is another way to solve this, and that is to do an R2. So you have to set it up one R2 away from its correct spot, right? So I'm looking at, okay, so now I'm aligning green with where it's supposed to be green, right? So that's going to be one R2 away, and I'm going to rotate that down that way. So in that, in that R2, I have not disrupted this piece, so I can insert that without a rotation. So now what do we have this case? You might see there are no bars here, but there is a very easy solution to this case. You see that with one move, we can join this yellow face together. And you might be asking, okay, Daniel, we're not using any advanced two by two methods to solve this case, right? Yeah, we're not. But however, realize that on the two by two, I'll just use this four by four as an example. If you do this algorithm, you will essentially sort of permutate all of these corners and swap these two diagonals. So what we can do in this case, rather than you know building this one over and doing that long algorithm, we could insert this over, and then we could do U2, R2, U2. This is a very, very useful algorithm in building your faces. So for the OL stage, I pretty much use the same seven OCL algorithms as my OCL um, 3x3 OL algorithms. 
So I'll just list them right here and I'll just do these individually. And then of course, the eighth case is just the top face being solved. If you train these algorithms enough, you should be able to get these within like five to like eight TPS or so. Um, so you can definitely get a two second OLL off of this. Lastly, let's talk about PLL. PLL is probably the easiest step out of all of these because there are only three cases. One of them is being solved. Um, one of them is this case, and then one of them is this case. So let's first talk about this case right here. Well, you can do this in a lot of different ways. When I was learning beginner's algorithms, I used the APERM to solve this case. But really, this can be treated as any corner flipping algorithm. So that could be all of these right here. Um, for example, let's say the T perm on the regular three by three, right? These two corners don't change and these two corners swap, right? And that's the same thing as, you know, um, an A perm, right? Headlights to the right. And now you have, so essentially you're just only solving for the corners or, or you could also say you're only solving the first step of two look PLL. Um, so also like if you want to do an R perm and it's really fast, personally for me, I do the JB perm, um, for this case, I just find it more consistent than, ah, uh, usually more consistent. Um, so I choose the JB perm, but of course you guys can choose other perms. Um, if you find. However, I would say you, I would not recommend any of the G perms or any of the R perms just because of the G perms I know. Um, they usually require like double flicks or um, a lot of finger tricks and it's just super hard to do with such a small and chubby cube. So the second PL case is this case where you're swapping the two corners, right? Well, this case is sort of equivalent to these cases as the three by three. So let's say like M perms and the V perm and the Y perm. So personally for me, I do the Y perm for this. Um, it's just the fastest one out of all of them. I can execute it pretty consistently and pretty fast as well, um, usually under a second. Um, but of course the benchmark we set for the PLL is 1.5 seconds. So with a bit of practice, only, you know, like two algorithms you need to know, um, you should be all set. So yeah, that concludes this video. Um, of course, I spent the most amount of time going over the first layer um, because the first layer is the hardest part um, of solving the two by two, um, especially efficiently. So I will definitely recommend you to spend more and more and more time just spamming first layers. And if you know there's something called um, you know, solving by phase, I think you can set like phases on CS timer. Um, so after you solve one phase, you can click the space bar. Um, after OL, you can click the space bar. After PLL, you click and it shows you the final time. Um, so that's with three phases. So if you do that, it's going to be so much easier to train. And you can also track, you know, if I'm losing time on OLL or if I'm losing time on PLL. Um, and of course, one last tip, it's probably easier to just go slow because slow is fast. Um, going slower will make you have less, less lockups, less mistakes, and also just less hesitations on the two by two. And with only five seconds to solve it, you don't have any second to spare. So that's it for this video. Um, thank you all for watching.
Um, please like, subscribe, um, comment down below if you have any questions, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!